Hey, friendo Steve, you're making a mess, dude. You're and Lars, a mess. Welcome back to Going in Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Steven Larson. This is the Going in Raw Matt Chat version. We're one week away from WrestleMania. We will be live streaming, of course, our reactions to WWE, NXT, TakeOver, New York 3, Brooklyn, whatever they call it. New York. They call it New York. I don't want to call it Brooklyn. Is it still in the Barclays Center? Yeah. Why are they calling it Brooklyn? It's got the branding already. I know. It's like the fourth or fifth one. Fifth Idiots. one, I think. Idiots. It's been like NXT TakeOver Brooklyn has more or less been NXT's WrestleMania the last four years. Oh, but that's at... Where are they going to... Where's SummerSlam this year, next year? Yeah, where's SummerSlam this Toronto? year? Toronto. Oh, okay. Well, that's going to be why. Because Brooklyn takes place in... Some, traditionally at SummerSlam. SummerSlam. But regardless, you'd think the name, the brand exists. I don't know. It's weird. That is weird. I would have kept it Brooklyn. The it just kept on the was tradition. Made not to our liking. I just, I just figured as long as they have one of the major four pay per views in Brooklyn or New York every year, which they probably will do, just keep NXT Takeover Brooklyn intact. Keep that name. Keep that brand. More or less, make it NXT's WrestleMania. But they're not doing that. It's a good yeah. card though. Yeah, Anyways, two WrestleManias in less than twelve months. So, anyways, this is Matt Chat, as you can tell from the soft jazz flute at the beginning of the show. Mm. And uh, a lot of people like that, by the way. I do, too. I've no, have you noticed that in the comments? More people are talking about the jazz flute. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, of course, this is where we answer questions from our amazing patrons at patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson at $20. Not only do you get the Friendo Care Package, which is, includes a comic book, some stickers, a double-sided poster, and a postcard. Uh, some of that stuff is autographed by us. Uh, you also get to put your video question or text question right here on Matt Chat for Larson and I to acknowledge and debate. Or just discuss. Anyways, let's kick this off. We got a bunch of questions. First up is Jeffrey Nguyen. Jeffrey Nguyen. He's in a, a like a moving van of some yeah, sort. Yeah, van of some sort. Uh, I wonder what he's moving or who he's moving. Take it away, Jeffrey. It feels like WWE has put all their energy into building the women's main event and the Kofi Bryant storyline, with seemingly every other talent getting buried in the process. So my question to you is, is this a good thing or a bad thing for the product? Let me know. Thanks, friendos. Thank you, Jeffrey. Most likely, I think Jeffrey Nguyen is most likely to be the guy on Dateline that when you realize they're not interviewing him, he did it. <laughs> Answer his question. Oh, man. Yeah, they put a lot of money. They put a lot of time and money into both Kofi Kingston uh, and, of course, the main event, the, the women's triple threat match for that Raw Women's Championship. However, uh, I think it's totally fine. Because it is rare they can even put so much effort into one match being a buzzworthy match. They have a good problem on their hands. I don't think it's burying the rest of the matches. But it is fascinating that on any other given year, Brock Lesnar defending the Universal Championship would be number one, their number one story. And this year... Uh, and generally over the past couple of years, it's never really been that buzzworthy. I mean, if you go back to 31, for example, uh, our lasting image of that build was Roman and Brock literally playing tug of war with the, with the WWE championship. And that was a big fart. Uh, what was the, I mean, the big match last year was, I guess the Ronda, uh, mixed tag well, match. They tried to do Roman Brock again last year too. Which was just a big fart. Also, who cares about it? They probably did one of those split-screen promo things. Terrible. Uh, so this year, we have at least one match, which organically has an amazing story behind it with the Kofi Kingston thing. The other one, I'm very much looking forward to it. I know a lot of people are, you know, they have their thoughts about it. But you cannot say it's not the most talked about, debated over match that we've seen in quite some time. Uh, I think that uh, they have a, you know, I don't think that's a problem. I think this is exactly what they want. They want a couple of matches, at least one match, that they can really, really sink their teeth into, and they have two of them right now. I think it's, I think it's a good, if it's a problem, it's a good problem to have. Um, they're, they are focusing uh, quite a bit of their uh, creative energies on uh, the money-making matches, and that's smart because uh, if you think, ma you know, a match or two has the ability to draw the largest fan base or viewership possible, you focus on those two storylines and dedicate the most TV time, creative energy, so on and so forth. It's unfortunate that there's a lot of really good talents who aren't getting a lot of uh, uh, good creative in the built to mania. 
We have no idea what the SmackDown tag title match is going to be. None. We're a week away. Um, we don't really know for sure what the Raw tag team title match is going to be, although it's going to be Revival versus Aleister Black and Ricochet. Um, and uh, based on what happened on SmackDown last night, it seems likely that Asuka uh, won't even be on the main card itself. She might be in the Battle Royal. It's interesting. Uh, well, if she if she's if she's anywhere, I mean, if yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, it's gonna be it's interesting that uh, the two winners of last year's Royal Rumble, the uh, 2018s, mind you, uh, there's a chance they they might not even be on WrestleMania this year. Shinsuke Nakamura and Oscar and Oscar. Oscar's definitely gonna be in the if if look if Oscar isn't and I don't think she's gonna be inserted in that four way. There's the possibility as we explored on Smack uh, on the SmackDown recap. There's the possibility they could give Charlotte two matches. Oh, entirely possible. I mean, commentary threw that out there. We're not sure if that's actually the plan or if they just threw that out there. Um, but so possibly exists too. She's that definitely going to, I mean, if, if she's in no other match, she's going to be in that battle royal. There is not even a question there. Uh, I don't know. They might think, well, they might think the battle royal is beneath her. She's going she's gonna to be in it. Probably going to be in it. I'm in just saying, match, possibly yeah. exists. Well, and they haven't even announced the battle royal. They haven't even announced the women's battle royal. Yet. Yeah, we don't even know there is going to be. We don't even know if that's going to happen. Just I would think. We haven't announced it. Yeah. Anyways, um, but this happens a lot of years. Uh, was it last year? Yeah, that SmackDown pretty much uh, mortgaged the entire show on Shane Daniel Bryan. Oh yeah. And the show was garbage. SmackDown, that is. The show was garbage. The match actually was pretty decent, but the show. SmackDown well, yeah, because suffered Daniel because Bryan of, was cleared right before. Yeah, no. The show greatly, SmackDown suffered because of it. Yeah. Um, and while the Ronda, Becky, Charlotte thing has been fairly convoluted and overbooked, maybe unnecessarily so, uh, it, it's gotten people talking. Yeah. Um, it is deserving of the main event spot. Um, and it's odd, the last three weeks, maybe, you know, like the, the Rhonda and Becky and Charlotte will get some TV time. Yeah. But they haven't been dominating their respective programs by any stretch of the imagination. True. Um, I mean, I feel like uh, uh, Braun Strowman and Colin Jost and Michael Che have gotten just as much TV time of late mm-hmm. as uh, Ronda Rousey has. Yeah. Well, I feel like Kurt Angle... I see, I th- and Kurt Angle, yeah, his yeah. his farewell tour has gotten a lot of time. It too. has. I think I mean, I've, I've been cool with that, though. I don't know. I think so. Like some of the builds that have been sort of non-existent, but could be killer matches: AJ versus Randy Orton. That sort of stands out as they literally just built it with one really good promo. They 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 think and, and I think kind of here and rightly there. so that match kind of sells itself. There's yeah. nothing really on the yeah. line except so bragging fine. rights. So yeah, that's fine. But they've done a pretty good job, I think, in the matter of three weeks, really building up Roman and Drew. Yeah, I'm invested in that one. I want to see Drew win. Yeah, yeah. although if Roman wins, I don't mind. Yeah, um, they've that. done a decent job of doing the Lashley Finn thing at times. I mean, if you think about how many matches they have, how much TV time they have to build this stuff, this year's build the mania, as we sort of run all this down, it's been pretty good. Yeah, like it's been, it's, been, it's been okay. It's been that bad. It's got people talking about the matches that they're supposed to be talking yeah. about, and then they've had some quality, simple but effective feuds to build a lot of these other things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, It'd be shocking to me if Oscar. And you're right; they haven't announced the uh, the women's battle royal. I assume there's going to be. I assume one. it'll happen. And yeah, you're probably right that she'll be in it. But I could see, given that she just lost, and if she's not uh, involved in a singles match on on the Mania card, they might just hold her out of it. Yeah, I, I feel what you're saying. I feel what you're saying. And I don't want to. I don't want to diminish the, the the battle royal saying that it's beneath Oscar because I don't. But you know what I mean. Well, like, it is. She was just champion. You could say it. It is. Right. You know what I mean. It though. is. It absolutely is. She should be on the main card fighting to defend or win a title. Mm-hmm. That is completely true. But just to get her on the card, it, it, I think that they would do it. I could. I see what you're saying. Like it could be the kind of thing where where they have they they have plans for her after Mania. Yeah. And so why would you use her on Mania? Be in a diminished role. Well, and also too, like she just dropped the title, yeah. Charlotte. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there's already, as we saw, you pulled up the YouTube video of, of that match, and the dislikes greatly outnumber the likes. You, greatly. Yeah, yeah. And they might not want to put a brighter spotlight on that whole scenario. Unless she's going to win the Battle Royal in a very dominant fashion. But even that, I mean, like, there's no, you get a trophy for winning the Battle Royal. You don't get anything out of it. Yeah, but here's the thing. She could be dissatisfied with all of it. You know what I mean? Like, she comes in there, she murders everybody. A couple people on Twitter 
pointed this out. It'd be awesome if they. Uh, well, that's how they should have booked her the the Royal Rumble. She was. It'd be awesome. Everybody. If this was sort of, uh, they turn her into like a true monster and she starts wearing the cool face paint again. Mm-hmm. That'd be really neat, like the zombie stuff mm-hmm. again. That'd be kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, in which case, it might be a good idea to hold her off Mania until you have that slight sort of you know yeah. repackage. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's, I can think of any number of reasons to not ha- if she's not going to have a singles match for a title at Mania mm-hmm. just to hold her off entirely. Yeah, and I th- uh, yeah, but just, at the it, same it, time, having her in that awesome. battle, yeah, I know, but having her in that battle royal just, is just really glaring. Wow, they have not handled her creative well at all. Is there anybody else that would even come close to being able to beat her in that battle royal if all things are equal? I mean, who else could even be in that? No. You know, I mean, I, I would say Naya, but she's going to be in a match. She's in a match on the main card. Everybody else is in a match. Mm-hmm. Even like Natalia's in a match. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, man. I think that are there are there so many women on the main card that they're not going to do the battle royal? Now I think of it, maybe because well, you, you have, have you have the Riot Squad. You have the Riot Squad. Naomi. You, you have Fire Desire. Carmella. Carmella. You have Lana. <laughs> You have sorry, sorry. Mickey James, Mickey James, Dana Brooke, Dana Brooke. Did they, was there NXT people last year? Probably. Okay, and then you got like a ton of people. But just think, you have Nia and Tamina, Sasha Bailey, in one match. You have Alexa Bliss as host. She's not going to be wrestling. True. You have uh, Charlotte and Becky. They're in a match. Yeah. Ronda wouldn't have been in it anyways. Yeah. So I'll just kind of take her out of the equation. So that's seven. Yeah. Talents that are that are not going to be in the battle royal. You have a lot of people. That's on about NXT. half of. Well, How many people were in that battle royal last year? How many? Twenty. Twenty. Is it thirty? Is it twenty or thirty? I don't know. I mean, we we pointed out ten people who don't have a match. And then we, I mentioned Selena some. Vega. She doesn't have a match. Yeah. Um. And then there's like a bunch of people on NXT. So I mean, oh, theoretically, all oh, the Iconics are also in the tag title match. They're so in the tag title. That's match, two more to yeah. take out of the equation. Yeah. Nikki I mean, Cross. She was talking about being a WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah, some of the best years. Twelve. Yeah. I mean, it could be done, but. Yeah, if you put Asuka in there, it's it's pretty. Yeah, she should dominate that match. Yeah, yeah. There's no, there's no other, but there's nobody even close to being bigger. And many people who have matches aren't even close to being as big as Asuka. So it's just an unfortunate circumstance. I really hope they give her a match against Charlotte. They do the, the two match thing, mm-hmm. but then Charlotte would have to win that. So maybe not. Well, she wouldn't have to if they don't care about that image of the four horsewomen at the end of Mania. That's all they care about. Well, we'll see. You know who I care about? Christopher Rappersod. Let's see what he has to say. Hello, Steven Larson. So my question is, can Seth Rollins beat Brock Lesnar for the Universal Championship? I feel like he lost a lot of momentum, even though he's the winner of the Royal Rumble. I feel like he's getting overshadowed by Kofi and Becky Lynch. And I feel like he's not going to win. And I think his winning the Universal Championship is more important than Becky or Kofi when they're suspecting the titles. Because we've been two years without... A universal championship, basically. And Brock doesn't like to come because of Vince, I'm guessing. And we need this boat back on Raw because for two years, we're just dealing with horrible storylines and elevating people if they were champions to make them bigger stars. So my question is, can Seth Rollins beat Brock Lesnar, really? Thank you, Christopher Rapper Sutton. Thank you, Christopher. Can Seth win the universal title? Of course he can, but will he? That's really the question. Will he? I'll give you a... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, it's my turn. So I've, I've maintained that of the three top matches where the fans want a very specific outcome, Becky wins, Kofi wins, Seth wins at Mania, we'll probably get two of the three. Um, because if you get all three, that's probably too many feel-good moments for Vince to stomach. As we just saw in this week's episode of SmackDown, uh, to balance the uh, the good moments, you need some moments that are going to make the fans upset. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, sure, you can have heels win... The other 13 to 14 matches on the Mania card, um, but uh, and have you know the, the the three top matches go the way the fans want. Nonetheless, if any babyface is going to lose when they're uh, top of the card matches at this rate, it's looking like Seth. Um, however, at the end of the day, as I sit here now, about three days removed from us actually doing our formal predictions, I'm still leaning towards picking Seth. With a very low degree of confidence. I'm yeah. talking somewhere between two and four confidence points currently. Um, yeah, They could hypothetically push to the Saudi Arabia show about a month after. Entirely possible. Since the women's match is many of in the show, I feel like Becky kind of has to win that. The way they've been booking the Kofi-Daniel Bryan thing, feels like Kofi has to win that. 
and they just really haven't invested, and in, mostly because Brock's not on TV at all. Um, the, the a lot of time into building up, so Seth's win feels inevitable. You know, it just kind of seems like it kind of felt like last year. It felt like an obligation. Well, Roman has to win because let's get this Brock Lesnar thing taken care of, so we have the title on TV every week, and it didn't happen then. Um, Seth is way more popular than Roman was a year ago. Fans are behind him a lot more. But when he came out for his promo on Monday, the response wasn't overwhelmingly like they, the crowd didn't like pop huge for him. Who Seth? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he got a good response. He always gets a good response, but because it wasn't they, a massive they, pop. I think because they understand exactly what they're going to get, which is not Brock Lesnar and it's mm-hmm. no physicality, mm-hmm. so they're not going to pop that much. Um, no, here here it is. Seth is going to lose at Mania. I've got three confidence points on that because I'm pretty sure there are two other matches where I don't have confidence uh, in probably the Andre Battle Royal. And, oh, uh, you don't want to put a lot of confidence points on Colin Joe's winning? <laughs> I'm going to give him two. And then, <laughs> and then I'll probably pick him. And then uh, Maybe I'll pick uh, Michael Che then. <laughs> it'll, it'll be, you it'll should. It'll be down to Michael Che and Colin Joe. You Jost. should. It'll be like me and you wrestling. Yeah, man. Uh yeah, and then uh, for and then uh, yeah, like the women's rumble, if that's even gonna happen or battle royal rather, I'll give like that one because I don't even know. I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, I, I don't think Seth's gonna win at Mania. I think that they're gonna kick it to Saudi Arabia. I think it probably makes a lot of sense to do that because in Saudi Arabia, you're probably not gonna have another old timers match where they just have to wheel out people. They're, they're, they'll probably bring Hogan back for that, uh, but you know, you need a big moment there. And uh, I think it's going to be uh, Seth. And I think they'll. I think they probably have a good idea in their heads as to how to approach Saudi Arabia from a PR perspective. Mm-hmm. Uh, just basically, don't even say that it's in Saudi Arabia. That's what they did with Crown Jewel. Live from an undisclosed location around the world, <laughs> the Crown Jewel too, or whatever. the greatest Royal Rumble. Yeah. So yeah, the greatest I est. I don't think he's going to win at Mania because uh, I think I think we've been right all along. He's going to be two out of three. I think he's the one that can go. I think he's got the least buzz among the three main event matches. Next up, new Matt Chatter, Philly Flexer. He, I love this question. This, this is, is a good one. This is a great question. Because I think question. he's got a good point here. Let's let us let him say it, though. Hey, guys. It's your boy, Philly Flexer here. Uh, longtime Patreon, first time Matt Chatter. Uh, my question this week is, is about uh, Baron Corbin. I'm starting to see that uh, the slow Wolfpack family award now, we're starting to get a little bit more behind Baron and stuff like that. People are starting to point out signs to him and everything like that. I'm just honestly thinking, in a couple of years from now, in a couple of years, do you think that Baron Corbin can be a guy like The Miz? Where he has been a heel this whole time or whatnot, people booing him and everything like that. And all of a sudden, one day, people start cheering for him. I don't know. Um, I just want to know your guys' opinion. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Philly Flexer, and Thank welcome you. to the match. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Hey. Hey. hey you're not. You're not. You're not me. Me. Anyways, uh, what a great point here. Could Baron, you know, obviously we know, for those of you who may not know, uh, when Miz debuted seemingly behind the scenes and out there in front of the crowd. No one liked him. Nobody liked him. A testament to Miz's career that that dude just stuck it out. He stuck it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know how people feel about Baron Corbin behind the scenes. Well, we know how John Cena feels about him. <laughs> Dumpster fire. Uh, what we've heard also about Baron Corbin in the past is that he hasn't been afraid to speak his mind when it comes to certain things like concussions. So like, the guy doesn't seem to be afraid to speak his mind back behind the scenes, which I think could benefit him in the long run if he were to stay with the company. Mm-hmm. Um because people tend to, to listen to people like that. Uh in front of the cameras, the dude is probably the 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 best pure heel they have right now. I mean, Drew's the guy that we love to hate. Uh, yeah, but he does such great work across the board that he's going to start getting over as a heel. Uh, yeah, as, and he'll have to turn face. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Corbin sticks to that heel roll the same way The Miz did for the longest time until he had a really awkward face turn. Now he's at the point where they appreciate the work. He's the heel who makes good points. Um, well, and now he's the face that makes good points. Now he's the face that makes yep. good points, and he's over. People like it. They have this perfect feud with Shane. Can Baron reach those same heights? As the Miz, I think that answer is a hundred percent yes, and mm-hmm. I've never even thought about this, but that is absolutely true. The 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 caveat here, it might not take him the same amount of time as Miz. However, uh, we're looking around twenty twenty six to twenty twenty seven, 
as to when the crowd would finally turn or it might actually take longer because he's so outwardly hateable. Yeah. Dislikable. Yeah. It might take him to 2035. Yeah. But it's going to be a long time. Yes. A long, long time. Well, that was, I think part of the reason yeah. people appreciate The Miz now is because he's put in the work. Yeah, exactly. For more than a decade. Yeah. I think Baron I think Baron takes pride in his work as well. Yeah, I think so too. I get the feeling that he does. He said before that, you know, he uh he enjoys going out there and and you know, getting people all in a mm-hmm. in a huff. Uh he enjoys that and if you enjoy the work, uh you know, it he always says, "Well, I'm here for the paycheck and stuff like that." But I don't know, man. I think he really likes it. I think he, no, I, I think, think he, he wants too. to be the guy who has the ball and runs with it, Yeah, you know? Yeah. No, I agree with 100% everything he said. I, I, I think if he if he if he continues to put in the work, continues to improve, um, cause I worry, I feel like he's made massive strides since he got called up. Huge, because when he was in NXT, you could tell they were really pushing him, but he was super green in the ring. Yeah, and his promo skills were not that great. No, and I mean, I guess you could argue now that his in ring skills and his promo skills are not that great, but he's made his his skills work skill set work for his role. Yeah. And there's a reason that pretty, he's universally loathed by the WWE Universe. It's because he's actually pretty good at his job. Baron Corbin is having a, a pretty fascinating trial by fire. Mm-hmm. You know, he's sort of the the scapegoat for the the, the catalyst for the McMahon shakeup. Ratings were at an all time low. Um, they, he was featured way too heavily. But every time he was on TV, you could tell that dude was prepared mm-hmm. to do his job. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, he had. All of his, like, you know, when he's doing those cheesy backstage segments, which he had a lot of, uh, he performed them at, to the best of his ability. Mm-hmm. And he was never afraid to be the guy who was humiliated on camera by John Cena, Roman Reigns, all those guys. The McMahons. The McMahons. So, yeah. man, and he just he eats it all up and he keeps on going. Yeah. yeah. And he's reveling in this whole anti Kurt Angle's last match opponent thing. Mm hmm. So I don't know, man. If you you got that kind of thick skin where you can deal with all that, oh yeah, man, and you're willing to put in the work and stick it out. People Heck are yeah. going to come around to him. Yep. sooner than later. Yep. Next, cult of false realities. Let's see what he has to say. Look in my eyes. What do you see? It's the cult of false realities. Back for another Matt Chat question. Let's get into it. So this guy done watching the live stream. Great, by the way. And I was thinking about how they've been doing Kofi Kingston's run through WrestleMania, how it's been so much drama and all this stuff is going into it. And it kind of got me thinking of what female wrestler could they do this with for maybe next Mania or even for Evolution? I could kind of see Naomi going through it, maybe Dana Brooke or even Natalia. You know, her saying that she's been here for so long and the fact that she's been having to go through stuff with family and Maybe she feels disrespected because she, maybe she's been getting looked over. But tell me what you guys think. Too sweet, hearty handshake. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Cult of False Realities. Thank you very much. My answer, it probably worked best at NXT because the fan base in NXT is probably more familiar with her work and the the the, the years that she put in working in the independents. Candice LeRae. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, she wrestled in the Indies. Who, Johnny Gargano's wife? No, Candice LeRae. <laughs> um, I mean, you could, they could use that as the springboard for the whole thing. I she, know, she could be did. like, I'm here. I'm one of the best wrestlers in the world. And I'm, I'm the secondary player in this drama, which now might be over for at least a year. Um, use that as a springboard, as a catalyst for her to say, and they tried that kind of once when when she seemed like, okay, I'm going to separate my personal life, my professional life. I'm focused on my career here in NXT. She had like a match or two, and then she was back to being a supporting player. Yeah. Um, no, she should be the focus because yep. she is that damn good. Yep. Um, she has all the skills to build up a, 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 an immense level of goodwill with the NXT uh, fan base. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not just cr- it's not entirely relying on what she's done prior to getting there. Um, like I said, she's probably been wrestling for at least a decade, if not more, in the independence before coming to NXT. Make her the focus. Uh, uh, people will invest in her story, um, and I think it could be really good. I mean, it, it, it's and they have the perfect foil with her, with Shayna Baszler, and it's a bummer they didn't capitalize on it until then because it seems like Shayna's on the way. However, 
You could have Bianca Belair be the heel in that story. Yeah, Bianca Belair. You can have Jessamine Duke. I mean, if you're trying to build up Jessamine Duke and Marina Shafir, what better pro wrestler to have in the ring with them than somebody who knows so much what they're doing? Mm -hmm. Like, put Candice LeRae in there with her, you know? Um, so, yeah, I think, it's, I think it's a great answer. I'm going to go with a different name. I'll go with Ruby Riot. Uh, I think that uh, she's probably, in terms of, I mean, it might be neck and neck with Ember Moon, depending on... No, I'm going to say it's Ruby Riot. Somebody whose potential hasn't been utilized to the fullest degree versus how they're being utilized. That gap right there is probably Ruby Riot. I think she's stellar in the ring. I think her look is like a nine uh, in terms of her packaging. Uh I think that she's such a, a well-developed, I think that she could be a well-developed, fully formed character uh, with just the, the, the most basic of creative behind her. Um, I mean, you watch, I forget, I think maybe it was an NXT little mini doc or whatever when she went out on the road talking about like her tattoos and stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there's a lot to work with there as a, as a human being, as a person, as a character. Um, and the fact that they've sort of just, continually every time you think that the riot squad is going to be booked as even close to being a threat <clears throat> they revert back to well we need somebody good to job to Rhonda or Naya Charlotte or Becky or Naya yeah uh let's shove the any number of the riot squad people out there and you know I mean they they treated her title match against Ronda Rousey as a flipping joke mm -hmm. an absolute joke they had they they didn't even try to make her look like a threat and I think that she could be the type who the fans will start coming around to, but it might take some time. But eventually they're going to be like, man, like, when is she going to get, like, she is so good. Mm -hmm. When is she going to get hers? I was, I was thinking of saying Ember Moon, but at the same time, Ember Moon, she's been booked pretty strong. I could see her once she returns having a pretty decent push oh, yeah. on Raw if a heel has that title. Yeah. For whatever reason to take it off Becky. Yeah. So I don't know. Next, Andy Nero. Brother Nero. Hey, friend, I say Stephen Larson. Andy Nero here with a match chat question for you. It's been a while. Yeah, long time. Um, yeah, I just wanted to know how much further can they f, f up uh, the women's division on both SmackDown and Raw at the minute? I think that the uh, Charlotte, Becky, Ronda thing has com fallen completely flat. Um, I'm really not that bothered about it anymore. Like, I hope Becky comes out as the champ, but it's just killed any buzz for me. Um, and uh, SmackDown's division is dead, really dead now. Um, yeah, that's just shocking. Anyway, thoughts and uh, opinions. Uh, too sweet. Hi, Hatrick. Take care. Thank you, brother Nero. Thank you, Andy Nero. Uh, the answer is, uh, I mean, not much more. Mania is a week away, so they can't really do. There's only one more. There's one more segment left for each of these, uh, the, each of the titles, really. I mean, there's a segment on Raw for the women's division. There's a segment on SmackDown for the women's division. Uh, we were just talking about the Riot Squad, and all three participants in that triple threat are going to be taking on the Riot Squad. I'm not really sure how much they can do with that. Uh, I don't know. I get your pessimism. I kind of don't share it, though. Uh, I'm looking forward to the main event match at WrestleMania. Um, so, yeah, I think it's, I, a lot of people are upset about the Oscar thing. But, you know, Oscar talent, talent always shines through. Uh, worst case scenario, she, uh, she goes to Ollie wrestling. <laughs> uh, I think matters will uh, will or things will improve, I think. Uh, if and when Ronda decides to take her leave. I agree with that. Um, they're focusing so much in the built to mania um, on the Ronda, Becky, Charlotte program. Plus, you got the tag title situation, the new belt, so they're putting a lot of focus on that. Mm -hmm. That Pretty much everybody else is, is getting overshadowed by those two stories, which is unfortunate. For a while, SmackDown was doing a pretty good job of focusing the full breadth and depth of their, uh, uh, of their women's division. Hasn't been the case of late. Um, can, I, I, can I chime in really quick? Huh? We just explored, though, how many... Like, well, we just explored the idea, if they can even manage to put on a battle yeah, royal, yeah, yeah, yeah. given how many of the women division talents... Or in are in Mania matches already, yeah. On the Mania matches, in matches that are probably going to be on the main show, not yeah. even the kickoff. So, 
I mean, to that degree, they're spotlighting a lot of talents. Yeah, they are. They are. They're doing okay. So, they are. Sorry, go ahead. Anyways, yes. Um, but I, I think that's it. It's, 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 it's after Mania ends. Um, we'll probably have some switching of talent with the shakeup that's happening a couple weeks after Mania. Um, and then you'll you'll see, I think you'll see the, the spotlight start to expand and focus on, on a, a lot more participants in the women's division. Yeah, I mean, that's one thing. It's the same, It's similar to Brock dropping the Universal title. Whenever you have Vince's big attraction holding on to a top title like we have with Ronda, mm-hmm. once that goes away, then, you know, Becky, yeah, she's hot, but she's not so hot that they can't take that title off her. And, you know, we saw that she had the SmackDown women's title and they had her drop it to Asuka Mm -hmm. um, at the TLC match. And then she couldn't regain it in that match at the Rumble. Mm -hmm. So she's on par. She's on level with other with a a batch of other superstars in the women's division Um, divisions, I guess, Uh, that I think it'll make things a lot more interesting. I think that you'll see the title uh, potentially switch hands a bit more than just one person clogging mm-hmm. up the scene. That's what it is. It's one person clogging up the scene. That's what Ronda Rousey is. Yeah. Uh, next guy, question from the Hall of Famer, Christian. Christian. Hey, Steve. Hey, Lars. This is a Hall of Famer. Christian here with another Matt chat question. Parked, not driving. I'm safe. Don't worry about me. I'm good. My question for you guys this week is regarding both of you guys' favorite things. Tournaments. Um, my question is, which in the modern, in the modern day of tournaments, has been top tournament? I'm talking every tournament from, let's say, the the original Dusty Rhodes Classic, which was my Finn Balor and Samoa Joe, all the way until this past Cruiserweight Championship tournament. So the Cruiserweight Classics, the Mae Young Classics, the Dusty Rhodes Classics, um, all of the above, the Cruiserweight tournaments. Which has been the best tournament overall in your guys' eyes? Too sweet, hearty handshake. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Christian. Thank you, Christian. Uh, I go first. You go first. I go first. Oh, no, I go first. Oh. Yeah, I go first. Uh, For me, personally, I feel like kind of the best tournament in terms of quality of the matches was the Cruiserweight tournament after they stripped Enzo of the title. Ooh. Um, of course, culminating in the Mania last year, match between Cedric Alexander and Mustafa Ali. But there was tons of... Tons of awesome matches. They brought Buddy Murphy in Ooh. for the tournament. Um, and like he, the match he and Mustafa Lee had was great. Roderick Strong had a great match with Cedric Alexander. Oh, yeah. Like match after match after match was phenomenal. That was really good. I think the best match Jack Gallagher's had on 205 Live was his match against Mustafa Lee in that tournament. Mm-hmm. Just every week it was stellar match after stellar match. Yeah. Um, and some of the best, you know, like uh, WWE matches of 2018 in my mind were during that tournament. It was mm-hmm. great. I'm going to go ahead and say the very first United Kingdom tournament. They really strip mine that UK scene for the top names, the top talent in a really thriving scene. And uh, I am a great lover of the United Kingdom. So that appeals to Steve here. Also, I love any of the either of the Mae Young Classics, man. Yeah, uh, I, I just love when. Uh, independent talent gets a, a big old spotlight mm-hmm. and it's like, Ooh, who are they going to pull from the indie ranks to see? So you have like a variety of competitors that you're not going to see under the same, in the same tournament at any other time um, because of the way WWE operates. So uh, yeah, I would maybe, I mean, if, if you're looking at a variety of talent, I would say the Mae Young classic. Mm-hmm. If you're looking at quality of wrestling and variety of talent, the UK tournament. If you want just straight up killer match after killer match, what you're talking about probably does win the day. Yeah. Next up, AO Worm has a question about all eat wrestling. All eat. Let's see what he has to ask. What's good, friendos? AO Worm here. So, quick question, guys. In about 10 years or so, do you think AW will eclipse WWE in everything like wrestling talent? Fan base, TV, everything, the whole shebang. Do you think AW will be above WWE in about 10 years or so? Or do you think WWE will stay the mega power that it has been forever? All right, guys, take it easy. Thank you, AO Worm. Thank you, AO Worm. Um, I'm about as a, a huge proponent and cheerleader for all lead as anybody else. I want them to be a massive success because I like alternatives. That being said, no. 
No, they're not going to overtake WB probably ever. And I don't think that's their goal. I think their goal is to sustain themselves and, and no, not a chance. No, so WB is is synonymous with pro wrestling. They're the Kleenex of pro wrestling. You know the Xerox. Yep. The crayon. Yep. Or sorry, the Crayola. Sorry. They, they get on. They get on. Uh, you know, like Good Morning America and stuff. Mm-hmm. They get on like the big. They have their own movie studio. Mm-hmm. They put. They do that. All Elite Wrestling, they don't even have a microphone for being the elite. Mm-hmm. That bugs the crap out of me. Yeah, no. It I get it's like I understand that like sort of the point is you know what? we're doing you, this you know what? on my phone, but you know come what? on now. I remember seeing like some fan shot footage or something where they're shooting stuff at an indie show. Yeah, I know. And Cody was holding a boom mic. Yeah, they had a boom mic there. I don't get it. I do not get it. I don't get it. Yeah, I don't know. I understand the it's they're they're in an interesting position uh with being the elite. Because obviously right now they they have to be in a holding pattern. They're doing what they can to build buzz. The Young Bucks just stormed uh, uh, Ray, uh, Ray DeReyes mm-hmm. and won those tag titles from the AAA Lucha Brothers guys. Um, but they, they have to do a lot of biting at time because that show is still two months away. Mm-hmm. And then we're off to the races because you got the May show. Are they going to do a June show? I think the Jacksonville one's in July, July. right? I mean, you're off to the races. If they get that, there's no TV deal been announced. I'm sure that probably just takes time. Mm-hmm. But they're looking to start weekly TV in October. Mm-hmm. Um, so time will tell. But I don't know. I just kind of feel like they're they're in an awkward spot right now, like right now in the moment. Because what can they really do? They yeah. don't have a regular outlet beyond being the elite. Yeah. But I kind of feel like they need to step up the production game on being the elite a little bit. Yeah. Or maybe that's just the way people really like it. And if they change anything, people might revolt. People might revolt. People don't like change, Steve. That could be the thing. You know, people don't like change. You're right. They don't. Uh, next, Richard Morris, apparently done with jury duty. Let's see what he has to say. Hey, Stephen Larson, Richard Morris here with another Matt Chat question. So I have a quick question. If uh, Mustafa Ali had not gotten hurt, do you think he'd be where Kofi is right now going into WrestleMania against Daniel Bryan? Personally, I think he would. I think the original plan may have been to pull kind of like a Jinder Mahal thing where they were going to India. They put the belt on him. With Saudi Arabia coming up right around the corner, what do you think the odds were that they were going to put that belt on Ali in order to, uh, for just for going into uh, Saudi Arabia and then that pay-per-view. Too sweet, hearty handshake. You guys have a good day. Thank you, Richard Morris. Guilty. Guilty or not guilty? This isn't Superman 2, man. Did he said that Richard Morris sentenced them to the Phantom Zone? Not Superman 2. Guilty. Um, I don't think Mustafa Ali would be in the position to be challenging for Dan- challenging Daniel Bryan for the WWE title at WrestleMania. Um all indications was that he was supposed to have a heck of a run in that gauntlet match preceding Elimination Chamber, have a good showing Elimination Chamber, setting up a title match for himself at Fastlane. But the idea was for Kevin Owens to take on Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania. That's what we have heard. That's not to say that that Mustafa Ali couldn't have uh, endeared himself to the crowd in a similar fashion as Kofi Kingston that might have had them alter plans. However, I think Kofi's tenure with WWE, the, his history with the company... Uh, added a lot more depth to his story, and and he already had that pre-existing, long-running connection with WB Universe that I think is what really kind of pushed it over the edge in terms of it being a phenomenon. There's there's also the element of people being fascinated with the New Day winning the WWE title. That's oh, I mean we've been we've talked about that for like year like a couple of years now. The idea of well, what would they do? Would they freebird the title? Would they not? How would they handle that? It's sort of a fascinating thing that I think is in a lot of the back of the people's minds. Mm-hmm. Couple that with people's love of the New Day, their desire to see Kofi get a title mm-hmm. shot. And then, you know, it actually, whoa, this is actually could happen. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. None of that I don't think would have been in play. Like you said, not to say it couldn't have been because people really like Mustafa Ali. Oh, he's fantastic. He's, he's one of my favorites for sure. And... When you see him perform, you want to get behind the guy. I'm just not sure the passion to get behind the guy would have been there the way it is with Kofi in the yes, New Day. Yes, Kofi's history with the company adds a lot of uh, of weight to the story. I don't think there would have been a lot of Ollie Mania hashtags out there 
uh, I think, and I think people would have been happy to see Kevin Owens return and and be okay with that. And I think he probably would have had a stellar performance in the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. He might have been slated to win that. I don't know. Although I guess they could still do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm thinking if he would have ridden the momentum into the Andre the Giant, he could have won that probably more likely. I'm kind of surprised that. Uh, and then after Mania, U.S. title. Yeah, and maybe maybe that might have been the cards to begin with that. Uh, you know, maybe he'll he'll come up short against Daniel Bryan at Fastlane, and then challenge Joe for the U.S. title at might have been like Mania a, because yeah. that that's that's kind of a, a an open ended feud still between the two of them. They kind mm-hmm. of started it, never really finalized much of anything. Yeah, I mean, he could have maybe. I had a thought on, on deck, and then I lost down it. the road. Down, push the it road. down the road. Down the road. Anyways, uh, next up, Bobby Naked Bobby Mincy. Let's see what naked Bobby Mincy has to say. Hey, friendos, Bobby Mincy, and I'm butt naked, and I'm back to Matt Chat. Steven Larson, a lot like everyone else, I really hate most of these scripted promos that WWE uh, spews out, but I also have watched some of the older, like, 80s and early 90s uh, wrestling where they don't have promos, they barely even have bullet points, and some of those are absolute train wrecks. So, one of you guys need a pick on if you guys are in charge, would you prefer scripted promos by these current writers, or would you rather just give someone a mic and be like, all right, go, we're live, and no rehearsal, no nothing. So, let me know. To sweet, hearty handshake, naked things. See you guys. Thank you, Bobby Mincy. We have standards and practices. We have a department for censorship right over there, and they're looking. They're, I mean, you they're just, looking at us. Just see your shoulders, man. They're like, hey, this is YouTube. This isn't a HBO late night. This isn't an episode of Real Sex mm. or mm. that one where they're in the brothel. Cat house. There you go. I know you're very familiar with that one. Uh, Bobby Mincy has uh, his question was about what kind of promos do you like? Oh, ramble, ramble, ramble. Because yeah, here's the man. thing: there's a lot of bad, but man, there's some magical stuff. Yeah, true. You let someone with some mic skills ramble. Scott Steiner, Macho Man. Yeah, Macho Man had no idea what he was going to say when when Mean Gene put that mic in front of his face. Well, okay, hold on a second. And it was great. He was known for his extensive preparation in the ring. Yeah. You don't think that would have carried over to the promo? He might have some ideas, but I, I don't know. Something tells me like he he was told, oh, you have mic time here. He's walking to the set, walks by, sees a little thing of coffee creamer. Oh, cream, cream of the crop. Oh, yeah. And he just goes there and talks. He takes like four of them and yeah. puts them in different places. And then the cream. Cream always rises to the top. Yeah. <laughs> but then oh, the downside man. is you get the warrior. Yeah. Where it's just incoherent rambling for... For, that dude probably did prepare too. Yeah, no. He got his, <laughs> I spit. Got his thesaurus out looking yeah. for words, and then forgets how the forget what the words he looked up. Just, I spent eight hours preparing for this. <laughs> but anyways, I think I think what what's lost often, not all the time, but often with scripted promos is is very rarely do you get that spark where you feel like someone is just going out there and and, and speaking their mind, bearing their soul in a genuine fashion. And I think when you have unscripted promos. It, 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 it's more likely to happen. It's not a guarantee because there's a lot of terrible rambling, incoherent, uh, nonsensical, uh, non-scripted promos. But I just feel like there's a, there's a bit of magic loss when you hand someone a script and tell them to do it. Yeah, sure. As opposed to people just speaking their mind. Yeah. Give me Randy Orton and AJ Styles. That did not seem scripted. It, there might have been elements to, of it that were scripted, obviously. But, man, that felt natural as heck. I don't know, man. I think it's a good – I think it's – it's all dependent on the talent. If you don't, if, if yeah. talent has exhibited the, the, the you have John Morrison, you probably need a guy who's helping him out. Yeah. And if you have someone like John Cena, he doesn't need scripts. Oh God. No, no, <laughs> no. He's a 10. Yeah. Uh, you have someone like Ric Flair. He doesn't need scripts. No, 10. Uh, but some people need scripts. Some people need bullet points. Some people can just put the mic in their hand and trust that they're going to get the point across. You know, what I was thinking of when I, we were answering a Orm's question about all your, all your wrestling mm. and I was running down being the elite. Like so many of their segments, so many of their little bits on being the elite feel like poorly mic'd, 
poorly shot, cheesy WWE backstage segments. Like the cameras just on all of them, and they're all like talking. And I don't know, maybe they're do, maybe they're doing it to be like meta or you know to be oh, ironic. I, don't know. Or I, I think it's just a situation where they probably just have one camera and can't do can't get a lot of coverage. Like, I imagine that stuff shot fast. Yeah, I think they just do it one take. Let's just do this really quick. Yeah. But I don't know. That just got me thinking about scripted promos versus scriptless promos. Because I hate those WWE backstage super scripted. Mm -hmm. Everybody's looking sort of towards the camera. They're divulging secrets that would never be seen when the, I know. When the camera's, camera's on. Camera's there. I know. It's so silly. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I want aimless, drifting, hosses, screaming, foaming at the mouth. Those are the best. Lex Luger was the best when he was just screaming at the mic. It's like, whoa, man, this guy's a hell of a promo. He talks with his real voice. And he's like, why do they let this guy talk? <laughs> exactly. Did you see? That's another thing I totally <clears throat> forgot to. It was the mania that they were promoting the WBF. Remember I was texting you that night? It was like, I think it was the Sergeant Slaughter mania yeah, versus Hogan. Yeah. And they did an interview with Lex Luger and... It really came off like the beginning of a porno. It's hilariously bad. I really want wow. to show it to you now. All right, maybe after we're done here. He was talking about the WBF because he was about to start doing that. Yeah. Uh, next up, we've got Jacksonville's Nombe One, Guillaume Halili. Let's see what he has to say. Hey there, friendos. This is Jacksonville's Nombe One, Matt Chatter. And my question for this week is... Uh, have y'all ever noticed Drew McIntyre, when he cuts a promo, he drops to a knee and it makes it more menacing. So my question is, what are some little things that uh, wrestlers have done to change their character into a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, could you give an example of both? Uh, a good thing a wrestler has done that changed their character and made it even better or something stupid or bad a character a wrestler has done that made their character even worse? Let me know your thoughts. Uh, this has been Jacksonville's number one mad chatter. Too sweet, hearty handshake. Bye. Thank you, Guion. Thank you, Guion. Go uh, ahead. Okay, so detract. Finn's smiling incessantly is... I don't know why they have him doing that. I, that's fucking annoying. I think he's doing a little bit less now that he's been in this feud with Bob Lashley. Uh, another smiler, <clears throat> Bob Rude. That killed him. That literally killed everything about his NXT character. As soon as he hit main roster, smiling Bob Rude killed him just killed him yeah um enhancing uh that one time they showed bob lashley's tron face it was like right here just yeah tron, all tron yeah, all right tron here. uh and then him showing his butt to people yeah that's what i got that was good uh uh guion's 100 correct correct mentioning drew mcintyre when he debuted on main as a heel completely reinvented himself and i, I won't go into it how he reaches out for the ropes Every little thing is so focused on uh, showing the sinister side of his character. And he's right when he, he'll drop down to a knee to do promos and stuff. Oh, it's so good. It's amazing. It's all these little details really flush out the character and it's great. Yeah, it's awesome. He's one of the best right now. It's so um, as far as something that came to mind, uh, detract, um, is when Dean got the Bane jacket. Oh, man. That's like screaming, look at me, I'm a bad guy now. That was awful. And then when he got the chain wallet. That was terrible. Like he's trying to appear tougher or something. Yeah. Look, I'm tough now. I have chain wallet. That was really bad. That was really pretty bad. much any like little character thing Dean did when he turned heel. Wasn't into. Whenever Dean gets away from just being Dean, it's not a good idea. But hey, then sometimes I, I Dean got, just being Dean isn't it doesn't I work either. I got a either. crazy hat. I got a crazy hat here. He's good when he keeps it simple. Yeah, because he's a really good promo guy. He can improv anything, and then they tell him to do anything, and he just it just doesn't work. Yeah. Stephen M has a question about Dave Meltzer's. Much ballyhooed uh, match rating system. Yeah. Let's see what he has to say. Hey guys, Stephen M here with my match chat question. Now, I was thinking about five star matches, and I was checking if Ray had five star matches, and he has a couple against Gory Guerrero. So I was thinking, who is the worst wrestler to have a five star match? Who's the best wrestler never to have a five star match? And who is has the most surprising five star match, or the most surprising wrestler to have a five star match? Too sweet, hearty handshake. Have a great day. Muchas gracias, Stephen M. Thank you, Stephen M. Uh, we'll get through this real quick. Uh, most, or sorry, worst wrestler of a five-star match. It might be unfair to call it the worst because I'm not that familiar with the work prior to the WWF days, but the Bushwhackers had a five-star match in 1986, I believe, against the Fantastics in the Jim Crockett tournament. 
I uh, there's any match. Like, death match stuff in that because that's what we heard. Yeah, I kind of skimmed through it and there was weapons and stuff in it. Oh, man. And at that's least one ref bump. Probably a cool match. Bunch of fighting outside. They got a five star match. Um, and then uh, the most surprising is probably Lars Sullivan. He was in that North American title ladder match. Yeah, a lot of mine just aren't people who were, had singles matches. Yeah. And then the most, the, the, the probably the best wrestler to never have a five star match might be Daniel Bryan. He's yeah. never had one. Yeah. Kind of surprising in Ring of Honor, all those matches mm-hmm. he had. None of them got five stars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. It's kind of weird. I think Meltzer's a bit on the inconsistent side, <laughs> to say the least. Because uh, a lot of these, like, War Games matches, NWA tag matches. So the most surprising to me who was involved in a five star match, Johnny Ace. I think it was a match in. Was it all Japan? I forget. Anyways, it was Johnny Ace. Worst, Lex Luger. He was in War Games 87 match. He, that got five stars. There's like 15 other people in that match, yeah. but still, he was in Wasn't it. Was Zabisco in it too? He's got Zabisco was in another one. Oh, he was wow. in a different one. Wow. Yeah, he got a five star match. Uh, I like your Daniel Bryan answer. I'm gonna say this though. I'm kind of surprised that AJ Styles John Cena match didn't get five stars. Kind of feel like if that was like in the NWA in 1986, it would have gotten like. Oh, five it would have broken the chart. It would have broken the chart. Uh, the, the, I'm talking about 2016 Royal Rumble match. Or no, SummerSlam. Summer, SummerSlam. Yeah, match. yeah. Individually, they've each had five-star matches, though. Boy, we're coming up on the three-year anniversary of us going to SummerSlam. Yeah, man. Gee, what is time goes Crazy. by fast. Uh, next, uh, question here from a new Matt Chatter, Liam Jones. New. Hey, Stephen Larson. My question for you today is, do you think that international superstars, like, I mean, like people from outside the U.S., are taking over the WWE and becoming more popular than people that are from the U.S. and... WWE. Thank you, Liam. Thank you, Liam. Um, I don't know if it's a matter of anybody necessarily being overshadowed, I think, uh, based on uh, various new platforms and outlets. Everybody's got a streaming service. Wrestling's all over YouTube, Twitch. Uh, it's just easier to see all the amazing talent that's 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 wrestling all over the world. Yep. And so, you know, like in the 80s and 90s, you'd hear, oh, this person's really great, and you have to start trading tapes with people to see it. They don't do that anymore. Just do a search on the Google machine, mm-hmm. and bang, you can watch pretty much anything. Bang. And uh, it's, it's a lot easier to become aware of talent these days than it ever was. It's a big world we live in, mm-hmm. and, you know, there's wrestling everywhere, and the dissemination of wrestling throughout the last 10, 15 years has become much more prevalent, and I think that's inspired a whole new generation worldwide. And so, like, all the great wrestling has just seeped into all different pockets of the world. Mm-hmm. And so, no, it's not surprising. I don't, I, don't, I don't consider it overshadowing at all. I think that plenty of amazing talents from here in America mm-hmm. uh, uh, still are, you know, uh, uh, plying their trade in, in a way that's great. Uh, I'll just throw a name out there. Brody King, mm-hmm. pretty sure he's, well, I know he's been based out of the L.A. area. He mm-hmm. might be based out of now, like, wherever Ring of Honor is. But, uh, but yeah, uh, I, I don't think, I don't view it as being as any overshadowing. Um, I don't think anybody thinks of uh, American wrestling and thinks, man, what a load of crap that is. Uh, I know, obviously, New Japan, they do amazing things on a regular basis um, in terms of their in-ring stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I think that just inspires a lot of wrestlers here in the States to try to bring their game up to another level. Everybody benefits, and I think it's, Terrific. Yes. There's uh, something for everybody. Exactly. Uh, next, it's Toronto the cat. It's Toronto the cat. It's a cat asking a question. This is a, an actual cat. Hey there, Stephen Lawson. It's me, Toronto the cat. How's it going? Here's my question. When does the WWE realize that there are other kinds of ladies in the world? You know, ladies who aren't blonde. Because they don't have a Charlotte problem. They have a, hey, let's push all the blonde ladies and uh, no one else gets pushed problem. Thank you, Toronto the Cat. Thank you, Toronto the Cat. No, um, well, I, I don't think they have Becky. A sh- Becky Lynch isn't blonde. No, she's not. I think there's uh, like Dana Brooke, she's a blonde. Uh, Carmella was a blonde, although she was champion. Uh, Alexa Bliss, she was champion. She's not a blonde anymore. Yeah, she just... She just- Plenty, plenty of these people have been blonde, can be blonde, and they're not in the main title scene. Lana, uh, La- oh god, salty Lana. She is. She was in a dark match. Mm, she's not anywhere close to being in a title scene. 
I kind of feel like hair color doesn't have a lot to do with it. Otherwise, we'd have a lot of other of those people I just mentioned. Vince would have said, Carmella, why did you change your hair to not blonde? And she would say, I'll tell you after this seven second dance break. So, yeah, uh, I, I think they're just fine to with the cat. But, man, keep keep that those questions coming with different animals. Yeah, different animals. Ryan Rigani under the weather. Yeah. Let's see what he has to say. I have the flu at home this week, so I didn't forget to submit this. My question is, I want one of you to each take a side on this topic. Let's remove the Iconics and Nia and Tamina from that tag team title match and give those four women you know, some time at the Performance Center. I think they could do a really good job. What do you think? Thank you, Ryan Rugani. Thank you, Ryan Rugani. So they get the, the, the gist of his question. Uh, would the match benefit from just being Sasha and Bailey versus Natalia and Beth Phoenix? I, I mean... I'm going to say no. I'd, I'd prefer the Iconics if it was anybody. I'm looking towards the future, and the future is Iconic. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd prefer to see if it had to be tag team versus tag team, one-on-one action. It'd be the Iconics. Well, two-on-two. Two-on-two action. One tag team versus one tag team. Uh, it'd be uh, Sasha and Bailey versus the Iconics. Uh, you're right, but I think the match would also be great if uh, it was Natalia and Beth Phoenix versus Boss and Hug because uh, Natalia, she's a good worker, really great worker, in fact, put on some great matches. Um, Beth Phoenix, we just saw on this past week's episode of Raw, uh, she still got it. Yeah, I mean she she dropped Tamina with a glam she slam, still no got problem. It. Um, and I think uh, giving some time to work out a match between the two teams, it could be phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal. Really, there's, 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 I think the match would be good regardless. I, I think we're, we're, getting, we're in for a treat. But feel better, Ryan. Yes. Uh, next up, God, look at the size of the dude's head. But he's dressed, dressed all dapper. Wayne Maker. Let's see what he has to say. Hello, Stephen Larson. Wayne Maker here. And I have a match chat question for you, which is based around Steve's impending departure from the US to the UK, which is going to leave Larson high and dry. Now, I was thinking that Larson needs a replacement. And what a better thing to do than to do a talent exchange. So if Steve's coming over here, Larson needs someone to fill in. And we have WrestleTalk and Cultaholic. Now, I would like you both to pick your replacements for when the other is away from Cultaholic and WrestleTalk respectively. You cannot pick the same person from each group, but you must pick one from each group. And to make it fair, toss a coin to see who goes first. Because you're blatantly going to have your favourites and you're going to lean that way. So let's see who you pick and why. So, too sweet, hearty handshake, a little bit of a shoulder lean. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, Wayne Maker. So, like, this is the size of, like, a normal head. And this is Wayne Maker, oh our gosh. logo. <laughs> I want to know if that's a sweater underneath the blazer so or a sweater I'm vest. I'm about to have some tea, fellas. Do you think it's a sweater or sweater vest underneath that blazer? Uh, I think it's um. What do you call those uh those things that uh like a girdle oh that he wears gosh. under there? Because <laughs> he's a fat bastard. Oh my! Gosh. I love Wayne Maker I do so too. much. I think Wayne Maker is the British Steve here. He's gonna hate saying that, but I kind of feel like maybe, that's the case. Maybe. <laughs> I like the look, though, Wayne Maker. Oh, it's super yeah, dapper. It looks great. It looks he needs, great. And he, he came out all presentable. Yeah, man. Hello, fellas. Super I have a question for you. I do like this question, though, because yes. I'm a huge fan of uh, both WrestleTalk and Cultaholic. I love those guys. Uh, I'm going to say I, I could talk to the, the very short amount of time that we got to spend with Adam Bacini. Mm-hmm. I would love to co-host with him one mm-hmm. day. I think I would be laughing the entire time. Mm-hmm. He's a funny, funny dude. He is a funny dude. Um, I love when he has to suffer punishments yeah. because it, he makes it funny in its tragedy. Uh, over there on Wrestle pathos. Talk. That's the word? Pathos. Pathos. Yes. Sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, over there on Wrestle Talk, man, I, I've been, uh, me and Luke, we got a little uh, tweet bromance going on. It, me and him seem to line up a lot when it comes to like movies and pop culture, but I probably want to go with Ollie as my, uh, as my, uh, uh, co-host, uh, because I can listen to that, that dude's voice 
uh, it sounds sometimes he sounds like a really good, fascinating nature documentary. Mm -hmm. And over here we've got mm -hmm. an alligator. Mm -hmm. You know that kind of stuff. Yeah. I, I so I would love to co-host with him. It'd yeah. be great. Um, I would pick uh, people who were probably closest in personality to you. Yeah, okay. Because I think, not that uh, it's a necessity to re replicate our dynamic, I just think it works best. Well, that's also kind of why I chose Ollie, because yeah. I feel like Luke is more the Steve of yeah, the group. Yeah, hence I picked Luke from Wrestle Talk and Ross from Cultaholic. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's good. That's really good. I think those would be killer shows. Yeah. Probably like they would enhance. Oh, absolutely. Whatever. Like if it's going in Raw and one of them is on it, Infinitely going in better. Raw would be way Infinitely better. Infinitely better, yeah. Exactly. Infinitely I better. Uh, next question from... I lost my spot. Patrick Sparks. B-Man. Take the it away, B-Man. Hey, friendos. Pat here. Okay, so Mania time's coming up. One of the best, worst, worst matches, if we're being honest, is um, the Mania Battle Royal featuring NFL football players with the recent retirement of Gronk. I want you to rebook another one. 30 people, whatever. 15 wrestlers. 15 uh, football players. Who goes over? Why? Thanks, Rendos. Bye. Thank you, B-Man. Thank you, B-Man. All right, this is what I got. So 30 competitors is a lot. So I'll just kind of go through some names. From the NFL, you need Gronk. Oh, Absolutely. yeah. You need D'Angelo Williams. Oh, killer wrestler. <clears throat> I know Sean Merriman has spent some time at the WWE Performance Center. Aaron Rodgers, discount double check. That's the championship belt movement That's he's right, doing there. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that would never happen, but nonetheless, I want him in the match. Pat McAfee, former punter for the Indianapolis Colts. Well, not just, you know, plus now he's the star of Mind of McAfee. No, I was, I was saying that he, he's got football bona fides. That's oh, why I mentioned okay. that he's a former punter for the Colts. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. In case people didn't know didn't he's played football. Yeah, okay. uh, Brian Urlacher, he did some stuff at TNA. Uh, James Harrison. Here's where I'd actually like to see Pat McAfee. Not participating in it, but commentating on no, it. No, I want a minute. Uh, James Harrison. How about let's compromise? It's like an and one thing where he's got the he's commentating while he's doing it. All right, fine, whatever. Didn't Booker T do that once? He was doing commentary during a match. Maybe. And it was TNA, I think. Oh, all right. Uh, James Harrison. And then uh, George Kittle is a tight end for the 49ers. He's a huge wrestling fan. Okay. Cool. Um, from the WWE, I just want everybody who used to play football. Okay. So Mojo for sure. Uh, maybe not Roman, just because. He's probably doing something else. Uh, Baron, though, for hey. sure. Tino Sabatelli, Riddick yeah. Moss. Oh, yeah. Anybody who played collegiate or professional football currently on the WWE roster should be in that battle royal. I like uh, it. In the end, Gronk wins, eliminating his friend Mojo. Ooh. Instant feud. Hype. You're not hype. Uh, next up, we've got... You don't, want, you don't want to answer at all? No, you just you just did no, it all, right, man. Right, that was fine, good. Sorry. That's good. I was gonna say, give me some beast mode. Yeah, that's a good pick. And then, but that's, that's pretty much it, because the dude's name is Beast Mode. What's his actual name? Uh, Marshawn Lynch. Marshawn Lynch. Yeah, thank you. Uh, next, I question from Loki. This one's great. Yeah, that's a good one. Hello, Stephen Larson. Lucky Richard here, the Freak of Flight, with another match chat question. This week is five wrestlers step through Raw Gate. What five would it take to make Raw Gate mutant a ten wrestler? For example. These five would make Rawgate a one. Wrestling, Vince Russo. Promo, Gavili Gooker. Look, Bastion Booger. Kayfabe, Michael Tarver. And Legacy, the Shockmaster. Have fun with the debate, and I'll see you soon. Thank you, Loki. Muchas gracias, Loki. Here, go ahead, since your answer's short. Uh, what five wrestlers? I don't need five wrestlers. I need two. John Cena. Kayfabe, ten. Legacy, ten. In ring, ten. Uh, it's a nine, actually. Uh, uh, be entering look promo. Pro, pro, oh, pff, should be eleven, but it's a ten. Uh, and then being good, even if he's like a six. You mean look? I'm sorry, look. Even if look is a six, which it's not, it's actually a nine. No, it should be. But a seven even if it's a seven, uh, then the other only other wrestler I need, Tanahashi, being good in ring ten. Look, 10, promo, who knows, doesn't matter, seen as a 10. So I just, and then take Legacy Kayfabe 10-10, ten, ten. <clears throat> you only need two. This would be the most devastating mutant creation ever in the world of wrestling. I try to be a little more creative with it anyways. Uh, in ring, give me Okada, greatest wrestler in the world right now. 10. Okay. Look, Macho Man. Oh, yeah. 10, all those awesome robes. Promo, Cena, 10. 
Yeah. Legacy. Killer. Everything, 10. Ric Flair, 10. 10. Uh, and Kayfabe, Bruno. Ooh, Kayfabe is 10 for Bruno. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that bell for eight years. Totally 10 Kayfabe. Well done. That's good. Final question in, ch- in a text form from Brandon Ford. Do you think WB is going to unify the women's division titles, and will it, in fact, be the main event? No. They're not going to unify yes. the titles. Yeah. No, but then, yes. They're not going to unify the titles. Definitely going to be the main event. Yes. Absolutely. Thanks so much, everybody, for your questions. We appreciate it. If you want to be part of Matt Chat, twenty dollars oh, on the Patreon a mess. at patreon.com forward slash You're picking all those Steven up. Larson. I'm just trying to do the gambit thing. Till next time, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye. One more. <laughs>